So I'm with Ross Lovegrove now in St John's Square. Ross, tell us what you've brought along to Clerkenwell Design Week. <laughs> I brought this pot plant, actually. Uh, it's a rather big pot, pot plant. It's, uh, it's called Solar Tree, and it's, um, it's a project I started a few years ago for uh, Artemide in, in Milan. Uh, so they're behind the project along with Sharp Solar. Uh, the idea really is to try and bring that kind of beauty of all those domestic lights that we all own or design and try and bring some of that to the public spaces uh, of the world. This product will, when the batteries are full and if it's really bad weather, it can still give light for seven to ten days, which is well, it's more of a testimony to, to the engineering of, uh, of Artemide really. So it's basically a solar powered street light, so it, it yeah. gathers energy during the day and then emits it at night? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like a typical street light in the sense that it's quite an extensive object if you look at it. I mean, it's not just a single stem. I talked to somebody this morning and they said, well, actually, normal street lighting shouldn't be so visible. It should just have a thereness. But there is often a poverty in the way those lights look or the way that street furniture looks. I mean, you know, th where's the forgiveness and the softness and the, the, the beauty of, of these objects? Is this already in use in cities around the world or is this the only one? It is. No, no, we've had, um, in the three years that this whole project's been going, We've had inquiries from 54 countries. That's from Botanic Gardens to Atlanta, Georgia, to the most recent, uh, the installation we're working on right now is to put 30 of them around the uh, Summer Palace in Beijing. A few years ago, you designed a solar-powered garden lamp. I think you were one of the first people to propose that idea. And then you did, did you do like a little urban car that had solar panels on the roof as well? So where is, where is how are you as a designer working with solar power and what could be next? Mm. It's nice that you remember those things, I have to say. I mean, that's a little, that's a pet side in a way uh, of the work that I do and it, it comes from my childhood because when I was young, when I was 16, the first thing I designed was a windmill because I was interested in kinetic energy and something for nothing as such. And of course, when you're 16, being brought up in Wales, that's not very fashionable. but. In a way, it would be great if a lot of those ideas were made fashionable now, were brought into the realm of design, because I think things can, can look cooler. I think they can look beautiful uh, and not be too marginalized. There are projects that you can do which help project the iconography of environmental design. This is one of them, but it actually does work in, in a good way. The solar bud for Lucha Plan was something that really did work and in its day was very, very difficult to make. But today it's not difficult to make those things. It's just That's the, the garden light we were talking yeah, about, the, the solar bud. Yeah, and technology, it's advanced so much now that it, it's a chance for young designers to think away from just a chair, a table or a vase and to think more about you know things that do affect our collective environment. Thanks so much, Russ. Enjoy the rest of the week. Yeah, lovely. And the sun's shining. It's amazing. <laughs>